Brilliant. So everybody else is joining as well. Nice. All right. Hello. There we go. Nice, ga nice gathering from, from all across the world. <laughs> hey, Mary. Hey, Bri. Hey, Silas. Hey, me. Hey, hello. <laughs> How are you all? What, what time is it where you are? It is 2.30 a.m. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh, oh, don't do that. 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice day reach poster behind you, by the way. Oh, there you Thank go, you. I Thank clocked you. that. So yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's 4 p.m. where I am. I'm about an hour's drive worth, uh, north of Manchester. So Grimfest kicked off today. It started about five hours ago. That's but, awesome. Uh, I have been fortunate enough to watch quite a few films over the past couple of weeks because the team at Grimfest are amazing and let me do so. So, uh, <laughs> Day Reach, I've watched twice, not once, but twice. Ah, wow. So, I, I'm going to start <laughs> off by thanking you all for making the film because I absolutely loved it. So, I, I will get that out of the way. It'd be very Thank easy you for, for interviewing me. us. It would be very easy for me to sit here and just, just fire praise at you for the next 30 minutes. And <laughs> I, I would like to, so I will try and get as much praise in as possible in between the odd question and the odd bit of uh, you all being allowed to talk as well. So, so there you go. Uh, where do I start? Right. Where do I start? Where does the, the story for it come from? So this is one for you, Brian, and one for you, Silas. Where did the, the genesis of They Reach come from? Um... Should I do? Let's see. Where do we start? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, begin the beginning. I haven't had my coffee yet. I what, actually spilled my was... coffee. <laughs> I, I, I guess, like, uh, I used to. Let's go a different route here. Um, let's go deeper here for a second, yes. Bray. Uh, so, Ooh, we're going to go profound here. I used, profound to work, route. Not, yeah, <laughs> I used to work at a uh, nine to five for, for, uh, for Coca Cola. You know, I was just. Uh, throwing soda pop I used to do that for quite a few years um, and on the side I was always thinking of like movie ideas and scripts and things that I wanted to do I never thought I would be able to you know I always thought that was like a hobby type of thing and I used to watch tons of movies tons just ton, tons and tons of movies no didn't go to film school or anything like that and I started scribbling out some ideas on a short film uh, that was called They Reach. And uh, one weekend, you know, I was like, I'm just going to film this with my friends. So I went and, and filmed a short for Bleedingham, which is uh, in Bellingham over here in Washington. And, and um, it was my first ever film festival that I ever submitted anything to. And it was this, you know, this silly idea that, I, I was kind of just making up while, while just working, you know, regular, you know, nine to five job and stuff like that. Like, and, and, and uh, it was received really well. And I was really, really surprised. Everyone was like, Oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And it, the whole, you know, the premise was, you know, it was, it was definitely different than what you see now in the feature film. It was, but it, it still had the retro vibe and it still had some spooky, you know, some scary stuff. And it, it was like, it was a concept trailer for a fake movie, pretty much. It was a two minute concept trailer for a movie that didn't exist. And everybody afterwards was like, you should definitely make that into a movie or something. Like, what are you doing with this? Um, and then I went home and I thought about it. I was like, you know, I should start writing something out for a script, you know? Um, and then, so I took about three months to write a very uh single spaced vomit draft uh of like non not script format at all <laughs> of uh the first kind of idea of they reach um and then i met um shortly after i, I submitted two other short films into the 48 hour uh seattle film festival one was a horror film festival and one was just a regular 48 hour and and through those i met uh Jason Connolly, which is our executive producer. And then I, we host, I hosted a meeting afterwards when he saw my, when I saw the, the treatment scriptment of this long formed, they reach blob of a mess on my desk. And he asked me what it was. He's like, what is that? I was like, Oh, it's just a script I was working on. And he goes, this, this is really cool. This is really good. Mm -hmm you mind if I show it to, you know, a friend of mine and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, 
Um, and so he showed it to Bry and Bry, and then later I met Bry, introduced me to Bry, and Bry and I had a meeting, a dinner, and and uh, Bry for some reason saw something in the script, <laughs> and uh, it was really rough. It wasn't even close to where it is now, and he gave me like 15 pages of notes or 20, I don't know, a lot of lot of notes, <laughs> and and uh, Bry, you want to take take over? Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. So I what? So what did you see in the script? Is something it, if you can cover it that? It definitely in your was well. was kind of an an audacious pile of notes that 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 had it that there was something in there. There was definitely, you know, there was definitely something growing in in these in in all of his notes that he had. I mean, he he had enough material to create a series out of this, um, but it there was um, there there was some interesting stylized kind of sharp witted stuff in there that I just latched onto. And I thought this, there's some, there, there's, there's a story in here, you know, it's not a story yet, but there's a story in here. And so we got together and we decided to do a page one rewrite and just kind of create a story out of that. And that's where they reach came from. I am so glad you, uh, and I'll touch upon this in a bit, where you said a, there could be a series in here, because that, that's something <laughs> that's something that I was very conscious of when I was watching the first the first viewing of it. Because you know yourself, when you're when you, like a big pile of horror films, you go, right, watch a lot of horror films for Grimfest or Frightfest or whatever. You go, eh, I'm sure a lot of them are going to be the same, because they're all in the same genre. So here we go, let's, let's watch the same. <laughs> and Grimfest this year, they've all been very, very different. And they reach is definitely at, at the top of the pile of those. They're not, all right, let's ah, watch a horror you. film. There was quite a few instances, even on the second view, in which I've just completed about an hour ago, the, it obviously has its horror elements in there. But then when, when, uh, when Mary, Mary, when you're on screen with uh, Morgan or Eden, and we're watching like, you know, building robots or, or Barracuda and all this sort of stuff, you kind of forget that you're watching a horror genre film so then when the horror things come out, you're like, whoa, hang on, I'd forgotten that was the sort of, so the, the layers of the film are fantastic. So I do want to see a series that features Jessica, <laughs> Cheddar and Sam. I would happily just, just let them, it was very Stand By Me-ish. Yeah. You know, it, it had that sort of feel or mm -hmm. Super 8. I don't really want to compare it to Stranger Things, but it has the sort mm -hmm. of Stranger Things kids element. And I mm -hmm. loved all that. Uh, but Stand By Me to me was the, this is, this is why I love this film because it has those elements in it. So, uh, thank Mary, you, Mary. This is your first lead role, is that right? Or is the internet lying to me? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's you've set yourself a high benchmark, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, it's certainly not going to be your last lead role. I would, I would bet my house on that. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so, what was it like taking this as your? I mean, the writing is fantastic. So that probably made it a lot easier for you but what was it like inhabiting the character of Jessica who is living in a time before you were around well it's funny because in 1979 my mom was 14 which is how old Jessica was supposed to be and the first time we read the script she would like point out things she would know what it is and she would like reminisce about it and I thought that was really funny because she was a big help on that but also um I have a Los Angeles acting coach Kimberly Crandall and we took the script and we broke it down scene by scene. And what we did was we figured out my character's motivation. Like, what does my character want? What is she like? Who is she talking to? And what are her relationships with those people? So at the end of that, I felt like I knew the character pretty well because I had analyzed like pretty much every aspect of her. And I really felt like I connected with her as well because we were really similar. Like we both really like science. I'm really into robotics actually. Okay. Um, and we both, you know, had the small group of friends and we're both really tough and hardworking. So I felt like Jessica and I were, were a good fit. I want to talk about the bedroom because I, I got so giddy at one point and this was, I saw a little sketch drawing of Devil's Tower from Close Encounters of Third Kind. <laughs> and I'm like, I love it. And then obviously there's a full size poster in there so the level of detail that you've put into into jessica's bedroom is amazing who who's responsible for that a big thank you to them <laughs> i'm pointing to silas's box <laughs> so silas silas talk to me about the level of detail 
in there, the <laughs> Night of the Living Dead posters, Plan um, 9 from Outer Space. These are all films that Mary's like, I, 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 have you ever seen these films, Mary, would be my question. Night of the Living Dead and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. No, <laughs> I probably, not. I really should. Watch, but... watch them. There, there is a Night of the Living Dead poster right, uh, well, my camera's mirrored, right down there, so I've got one. Um, so what? Close Encounters is my favourite film ever. It's, it is always has been since I oh, saw wow. it as a kid. So I was very, very happy that that uh, got a nice little cameo in there. <laughs> yeah. But talk to me about the details of the, the props and everything for that mm. film is it fantastic. Was, yeah, thank you so much. It, thank you. Like you're kind, it's like super kind words. Um, I, I, uh, I worked with uh, another art director named Adam Rubzand and we um, kind of like just scoured the internet and Bri including including Bri, we, we, we were really adamant about trying to have the, that kind of vintage feel and everything in, in each set or, you know, it, it needed to have something um, just, if it was in a shed, you know, we can't just have like a brand new lawnmower or something in there, you know? So when we're, when we got into Jessica's bedroom, I was really excited because, you know, just, Every, we could we could throw all these awesome you know like you said like all these awesome posters and like uh, what maybe what she would be into you know for these you know retro films and that, you know we started ordering posters like right off the bat I was like oh, okay we got to order this one we got to order this one we had to make a few posters ourselves I remember Brian and I had to make mm-hmm. like one of the there's an alien poster back there with Ripley and it's not Maybe. really, it, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's not really an alien's po- uh, alien poster, but it has her, you know, holding a flamethrower and stuff like that. But um, but it's in the back, and it usually it's blurred out. But we you have to be really careful with like titles and stuff. So that's why a lot of, a lot of stuff is covered up. Like half the titles missing with like with like in the movie uh, Jessica's uh, her character Eminem's character Jessica. She's has like, you know, drawings or notes scribbled over, like pasted over posters so we can yeah. make sure we don't get in trouble for, you know, uh, seeing the full titles of posters and stuff like that. But it was really important to establish like how into the sci-fi world she was or how nerdy she was with, when, it, when it came to uh, films and stuff. I thought that would be a really fun, you know, um, homage to, to, to some of these classics. Yeah, we wanted to get that genuine 70s feel and kind of capture that dynamism of, of right. the era. And you did. And, yep. and I think uh, Mary Madeline captured it really well. She was obviously she didn't grow up in that era, but she just dove right in and it felt like she she lived it. What did you uh, what did you one. think of the Polaroid camera, Mary? Because that's something that <laughs> they don't really hang around too much nowadays. <laughs> I thought it was super cool, like have the also the picture pop right out. I have a Polaroid camera upstairs, but then the one they used on set was like this big bulky one with the little light bulbs on the top. Yep. And so I remember there was an issue or something where we had to go and get more cartridges because, you know, we do so many takes. Um, so we had to be very careful about how many times we actually used it. But yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. That was a very cool bedroom though. So it was... Uh... Yeah, very, very impressed with that. So the level of detail was great because I was eight years old in 79. <laughs> so I had that room was, I didn't have too many robots and, you know, uh, strange looking tape decks kicking around my room. But uh, <laughs> like, the, the wall you. design and everything was spot on. So what was the what was the filming progress like? What was the schedule on it? Just to get slightly technical. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> <Me. laughs> Over to you, Brian. I laugh because the schedule was kind of all over the place. We were... We definitely weren't a big budget movie <laughs> at all. Uh, this is definitely an indie movie, and we were a, we were a, a low budget indie film, and so we had to work our schedule around other people's schedule, uh, big time, and especially especially the kids, the kids. I say kids, yeah. they're adorable. Anyway, uh, we had to definitely work around their schedules, and so uh, the schedule was it was a struggle that's for sure it was kind of harsh at times mary madeline can talk a little bit about the schedule i mean it was four days a week and it was normally from saturday to tuesday so we would miss two days of school and then go to school three days a week and then go back to filming and yeah it was interesting so what's what's it like now mary so it's your first lead role 
which I won't keep harping on about that. But so what's it like now? Your film is being played all over the world on big screens. You know, a lot of people are obviously watching it virtually, but the, the first time I watched it, I watched on a 120 inch projector screen down, downstairs. And then the second time I watched it on a 60 inch TV. But so what's it like in your mind to go, this is, is it kind of weird? To have people see my movie finally? You know, to, to people are seeing your first lead role all over the world. It's definitely an interesting experience. I mean, I have waited a long time for this to finally emerge um, because I, when I filmed it, I was 12 turning 13 and I'm 15 now. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I've hyped it up to all my friends and now that it's finally <laughs> going to arrive, I'm like, oh my God, guys, let's go to Walmart and let's buy these and make a day out of it. <laughs> And so I'm just really happy and I'm really thankful to Grimfest for having us to, for the showing because I'm really excited for everyone to finally see it because everyone put in a lot of hard work and I'm really happy with it. And it premieres, I believe, in like a day or so at the actual film festival for the public to go to. My review has been out there for a while, other people's reviews. The reviews are really good as well. Is there a, obviously, there is a slight bit of nerves when you put a film out there, especially when you've spent several years putting it together and it is on a low budget going, I hope people, I hope they like it. <laughs> this is, <laughs> yeah. how, how, have you, how have you coped with that? Or, or, do, or do you uh, just go, right, it's done now, it's out there, the world can decide? Or how, how think, does that side of things work? I think Brian and I are... I can't, I think Brian and I are the same mindset here where we're just like, we just want to, we wanted it, we wanted to let it go for so long now. Um, Cause we've been working, you know, back and forth with a distributor and uh, you know, figuring out like, you know, how should we try to, you know, present it to the United States and Canada and hopefully the, uh, you know, the UK and other places as well. Uh, and we were, we just been on this train for so long. I, I feel that, I'm like totally ready to just get off this train and, <laughs> and hop onto the next one because Brian and I have some other things that we're writing and that we're going to pursue here very, very soon. And so um, I'm very happy to see this one kind of go where it needs to go and, and forever, you know, be out there for people to check out. And if they like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't, you know, and if people want to like look at it for, you know, like maybe I'm just, where did we were, it was, it was for, you know, a younger audience and, and, um, you know, so we, we were just hoping that people would just have a fun, you know, like a fun roller coaster ride for it. So, um, yeah, the, the funny thing is, oh, sorry. No, you're good. You're good, Brad. <laughs> no, I'm the director. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, Brad. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I'm, I'm loving the vitality that's coming out of the, the build up to Grim Fest. And I'm I'm enjoying this train ride. Actually, it's yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's more fun than you know a Bong Joon Ho train ride actually <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's um, a lot more fun than, than, than that train ride actually. <laughs> um, but it's uh, it's interesting because we did a little testing, I guess you could say, on a different kind of marketing, which didn't work very well, and then we we wrote this before Stranger Things ever existed. Stranger Things yeah. suddenly came out in the middle of our writing this and we we're like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it <laughs> sounds a little similar. But we were pulling in, you know, you as you know, we were pulling in kind of the references to the Goonies and, and uh, Stand By Me and those 70s, 60s, 70s horror films or even coming of age films of uh, young adults or teens, uh, preteens and teens uh, kind of living in this world, struggling with their, their identity and, and also fighting supernatural creatures. And, and so that's, that's what we were tapping into, <clears throat> which is also what kind of Stranger Things is tapping into as well. And so when we, when we kind of harnessed the marketing and we, we let people see who we were uh, as we, as we truly are, and then then we get good critical reviews. People like us. Um, when we <laughs> we had a little little poster out there that looked way too Stranger Things ish, and uh, that didn't make people very happy. And I totally understand that. And we weren't very happy about that either. But 
but when we have when we, when we're when we don't have that poster out there because we aren't stranger things at all uh, then the critics like us the people like us they watch our film and they realize that this is a fun film this is a fun ride you know it's it's definitely not a slasher movie at all and it's definitely not stranger things it's definitely a a kid a, a fun kid romp um, through the 70s as they struggle to to unearth a mystery while fighting a demon so you know i, th I think I, that's I the thing went off on a tangent there but i think while people may <laughs> may draw a slight comparison it is only very slight and, and that's pretty much just to do with the the age of the principal leads to Stranger Things. I think yeah. people need to remember that Stranger Things also drew from films that you'd mentioned, like The Goonies and mm. The Gate, and you know, so mm. lots of 70s and 80s films. So, <laughs> right. you know, some people seem to think that Stranger Things was this massively unique thing that just came out of nowhere, <laughs> and it was like, wow, that's an idea I've never ever seen before. And go, go watch Firestar <laughs> right. and stuff, and then you can uh, yeah. go back to watch Stranger Things. But uh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. also Stranger Things will help because there is a certain brand recognition, isn't there? People will have watched Stranger Things. So if I say, well, if you like Stranger Things, check out They Reach, you might go, I, I like Stranger Things, I will check out They Reach. <laughs> so there's a there's a, a to and fro, I think. Yeah, from I agree, yeah. So Mary, what was the most fun film to see, fun scene to film? I'll get the words in the right order at some point. Probably, I'm gonna try to be discreet about it because it has yeah. major spoilers. No, no, no spoilers. I mean, I'm very careful never to do spoilers. <laughs> There's a scene where um, Jessica is trying to get back into a house mm -hmm. uh, and she's stopped and she has to like pound her fists against the door and try to get back in and then a character, Alex, um, just grabs Jessica and throws her over his shoulder and I get to like pound my fist against him and then he throws me in a car and I try to get out of the car and it's just a lot of fun because it was so much action and I really got to go all out and like be a scream queen and everything. And what was the most difficult scene to film if there was one? Think about that. Um, what, what tested your acting skills? Probably a scene where Jessica shows up at Sam's doorstep and she's crying. And that's probably just because um, it, it took a lot for me to do that because um, I had never really done anything like that before with tapping into that kind of emotion. So I really had to dig deep for that one, but I think it turned out good. I think it turned out good too. Yep. So Silas, Bry. What was uh, what was the most fun scene for you guys to watch back on the finished film? I loved watching the um, the the scene in the shed with the the trio. Um, it, it was just because that was the first scene that we shot, and it seems like they immediately bonded. Mm. And we were so surprised that the very first day that we shot, we had the three of them on set. They had just met, and then bam, they were acting, and they were acting like they had known each other for since since they were born and and they they just bonded immediately and it, it was it was so impressive it was and it was also very cold that day it was like 32 yeah, it degrees was it was freezing really so really cold in between remember, takes we were wrapping up our actors with coats and blankets <laughs> we had the crazy. heaters we had those like those um propane heaters all over so that was that was my role. I was it was because it was such a miserable day. It, it was a, an amazing set, <laughs> Old Deerfield's house in Yelm, Washington. In case uh, people in the UK want to know where that is, <laughs> I did. That was one of my questions. I had locations. Where were they? So you've ticked that one off the box. Yeah, it's it's an adorable little town in in Washington, and uh, and and he has an an amazing ranch in Washington, and he has these great places to film. Actually, there have been probably eight or nine films filmed at Joel's ranch. It's, you can, <laughs> it's amazing how many things have been filmed there. But that day it was cold, it was miserable, great set, great team, and it went really well. And, <laughs> and I was delighted, I was delighted. It was so much fun to see, to, to watch, watch these actors bond so well and do such an amazing job. That's one of my highlights as well as watching the main, the sort of three characters just do their thing. It's great. So <laughs> more of that in, in different films, please. Uh, Silas, what was what was the favorite scene to watch back for you? Oh, I should have been thinking about this. I was reminiscing with Bri 
Oh. <laughs> just vicariously living that that scene. I was like, yes, that was a good scene. We all were. It was. To be fair, we're all like, yeah. It was. It was a great scene. It was, like Brian was saying, it, like watching the kids like say the lines that Brian and I wrote, and 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 just seeing it come to life was super cool. I was like, oh man, this is this is actually happening. What the heck is going on? Um, now, uh, there's I like, you know. There's so many scenes. I like the library scene. That was pretty cool. I'm just trying to think, cause that was so fun. Remember, Brian? We had we had um, we had a w overnight at the library, or it was a, it wasn't it was actually a bookstore, and we did we all we shot the entire library scene in one night, cause we, that's what we had <laughs> to work with, and so everyone just got there, and it was like 6 p.m. I think, and then we just like every we ushered the crew in and everybody, all the actors and everybody and um, locked the door. And, and then we just started shooting from kept the so, cats from getting out. There were three yeah. cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, we were up till 6 AM on that day or I think we did a full, full overnight, but it was a rough shoot, you know, because you know, we're all tired and stuff like that. And the kids were sleeping in the corners, like <laughs> during their rest times when we were setting up cameras, you know, and, and setting up lights and stuff. But, um it was it was fun though those overnights kind of like they can do something it's almost like when you have like a slumber party you know <laughs> when you have like when you're younger and you're like let's all come over and like let's watch like a bunch of scary movies and have a slumber party it seems like extra fun and extra like you know because i'm just a giant child myself so it, it it just seems like you're gonna hang out and you know make 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 believe with your friends and like <laughs> hang out and you and did just, you hung out with your friends and made make believe so it, you, you did exactly that so you are yes you're still a big child silas yeah 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 <laughs> keep, so that's, that's, keep being a big child fun. keep yeah. being a big child because you, you guys have produced gold it's really uh, <laughs> thank you fantastic thank you. so the the choice to set it in 79 with a little bit of 1969 at the beginning it would have been the super easy route to set it nowadays wouldn't it because you wouldn't have had the props you would have lost a brilliant ingredient <laughs> from the film so i'm i'm so glad you did set it in 79 but for budget reasons or schedule reasons was there ever a, a conversation between you two to set it in modern day <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah. budget definitely goes up <laughs> as the time yeah. goes back um so yeah I, silas could probably talk about that but no, yeah this is what i met bry what i met the first thing out of bry's <laughs> mouth is like you know this is a period piece right <laughs> it was like, yeah no he bry warned me many times before we even <laughs> we hit the production button you know he was like okay you sure you want to set it back in the day and we always had to watch you know are they wearing you know is, is that a is that an apple watch that you're wearing you know are you is, did you just pick up a cell phone did somebody leave their cell phone on the on the counter did a prius yeah. just drive by you know, it's, it's, it so was we were, a challenge yeah yeah and i think it's worked i think there's only one line that i will look to see who invented that line and it was uh, when eden says game over man i'm like is that an aliens line from 1986 <laughs> but i'm pretty sure bill paxton it, would have stolen it from somebody else so I'm it, all right with it that. was like <laughs> yeah. uh, we said game over and game over and and i think that was close to when bill paxton passed away and i was when we were filming it and it was like our own mini tribute to yeah. to him and <clears throat> i was just James Winters is our director of photography and we, you know, growing up in the same films that we love and we were, had a conversation and Brian was like, yeah, let's just do it. You know, like, let's go for it. And she's goofy and quirky and maybe it's in some weird universe, you know, that, you know, maybe she said it first and then, you know, and then Billy <laughs> Pax was like, Hey, you know, game over. Or something. I don't know. It was a, uh, it was just a little tribute there. So. It's a nice tribute, and it, it put a smile on my face as well. And pretty much most scenes with, with Eden in, and I was wondering, Mary, what was it like working with her? Because she's got like she's looks like she's high on e numbers or something. <laughs> she's crazy <laughs> with the whole pizza in the face. So how hard was it to to keep a straight face while you've got your co-star slapping a pizza on the face, and then jumping into the middle of a basketball court? <laughs> It's really funny because um, in the movie, her character Cheddar is portrayed as this really crazy, kooky, fun girl. And Eden is a little more like she's really nice and she's really like laid back. And she normally wouldn't slap a piece of pizza on her face. 
she is a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, Bri, Bri uh -huh. would be the one to slap the pizza on his face. I usually, yeah, whenever I get a pizza, yeah. I usually slap it on my face first, and then yeah. I, you know. Every time we go out <laughs> to <laughs> eat, yeah, I just, I'll, I'll, I'll be, like, looking over here. I'll be like, Bri, maybe my forehead. we should, yeah, I'll be like, well, maybe we should go over, sit over there. I'll look over at Bri, and he's, like, putting pizza on his face all the time. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but Eden and, and Mary Madeline, they had such good chemistry. and They did. It, it, just... <laughs> We cracked up with, even when they were offset, they, they were, we should have kept a camera on them like 24 seven. We could have created a whole series on them. They were, they were so much fun. Yeah. Do it like the Truman show. <laughs> yeah. It Mary was... and Eden. I'd watch that. <laughs> it worked. So what's next for you all? What's, what are you all working on now? I mean, this is obviously, uh, this film wasn't finished yesterday. So you've obviously you've been working on bits and pieces. Uh, what's next, Mary? What are you, what are you up to now? Other than talking to me, of course. Well, unfortunately, COVID has kind of slowed down the market, yeah. so not too many things are, you know, are coming out because uh, if they don't want to give actors auditions if they can't film anything. Um, so I'm just out here uh, hustling for auditions. Hopefully, something will happen soon. I'm sure it will. I think, and more so when people watch they reach, you know, when it goes from the festival stage to people being. I mean, what is the distribution for it? Uh, Silas, it comes out. Are you or when it comes out uh, in our area? Is that what yeah. you're asking? Um, like um, November third should be yeah, out. So probably, very, yeah. very soon. United States, Canada, November third. Probably the UK mm -hmm. at that time as well. So, um, mm -hmm. and uh, English speaking English speaking countries, mm -hmm. um, most likely early November. Nice. Not long now. Less than a month. Yeah. Yeah. So, Silas, Bri, what are you guys working on now? We have, shall we tell them? They we're, we're working. <laughs> we are. We are thinking about they reached you, really? but we um, we're working on a um, a sci-fi comedy uh, feature, which um, we're developing for an executive producer who thinks we need to get our butts in gear and get that <laughs> done. <laughs> and then we're um, also working on a series that's a horror comedy which okay. we can't wait to charge into. But well, we have charged into it, but we can't wait to get even more into it. We can't wait yeah. till COVID's gone, yeah, so we can be on set. 2020 yeah. has yeah. just pretty much killed any schedule at all, isn't it? other than virtual yeah. film fests, of course. Lots of development yeah. and lots, lots of, if you have post-production to do, then, hey, this is the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. or yeah. pre-production. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for people who, because I've avoided spoilers, because I don't, I always like to go into a film cold, not as cold as it was on set by the sound of it. I don't need a paraffin heater or anything, but I always like to go into a film knowing as little about it as possible and just see what surprises I got. They reach worked perfectly for that. So how would you non-spoilery pitch the film? Mary, you do how you can pitch it. <laughs> so what is this they reach about? Do tell me. This is not your typical horror slasher film. It is much more than just a horror film. So it has touches of comedy, it's an adventure, and it's a coming of age centered around three teenage kids. And um, there's a really important central message, be true to you, who I hope other kids my age watching it will be able to internalize. What'd you think of that pitch, Bri? That was good. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I, and I, it doesn't surprise me that Mary Marilyn would do an amazing job pitching. You know, she maintained straight A's while she was making this movie. I'm just going to throw that out there. Nice. Yeah. Show off. <laughs> you show off. Yes. Homework on set. What was that? I said, you told us we couldn't do homework on set either. I know. That is no, not true. No, that is not true. <laughs> no homework on my set. It's just fun and games, guys. <laughs> so I yeah, will... But I will thank the three of you for a taking the time out to have a conversation with me, but also for making the damn good film. I loved it so much. Thank I've you. watched it thank twice. You. We love making it too. I never yeah, run out of so films to watch. So for me to watch a film twice, it's got to be something special. So they reach <laughs> enters the list of about four films this year that I've watched twice. And I can't remember Yay. the other three. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. So, uh, and also thanks for taking the time out to have a conversation with me. Thank you to team Grimfest as well for, you know, thank you. Grimfest. Yes. Yes. Um, you will see me tweeting out and tagging in and, and various bits and pieces, the reviews. And also when the, uh, when the film arrives on physical disc and, and, 
download and stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm not stalking any of the three of you. I'm just a massive <laughs> film fan, and I want everybody to watch They Reach as much as possible. So oh, yeah. thank you very thank much. You. Good luck with the rest of the press. Hopefully you've got more of these lined up. I'm sure you do. But enjoy the rest of your day as the sun goes down on mine because I'm in the future, technically. <laughs> I know, right. I know, right? <laughs> okay, guys. And I will leave Thank you, you so it. much. Thank you so much. Well done, Mary. I look forward to seeing your second lead role, which will not be far off. And uh, <laughs> Silas, oh, one final question for you, Silas. So you could go back to when you're, you're doing the thing with Coca-Cola. And somebody says, you know what? Your film's going to be seen across the world. It's going to be in film festivals. It's going to be coming out. What would you think? Would you think, yes, I wish, or go away, stop making fun of me. Let me get my word up. I would, I would, uh, I would ask him what, when he was from, and then I would ask him, you know, is there flying cars? <laughs> and then, and then I would get some really horrific, just like, like he'd be like no like everything's you know crazy and there's smoke in the air and I'd be like oh my you are from the future um no i would uh, i would um i would be even more like uh a fire lit underneath me even more to make the film i'd be like oh my god let's do this <laughs> i'd be super super excited so um yeah I, I can't believe like just just through the people I met, you know, Brian and I'm here, just sitting here, and, and uh, our, the rest of our cast and crew that we, our film family that we had to find and bring in, um, we were, you know, I, w I was super fortunate because I can't, I couldn't do this alone. So it just with, with our whole team and everybody involved, it took everything, every ounce of what everybody had to make this thing come to life. And you've so, made it come to life. And thank you once again to everybody and to the cast and crew that aren't here uh thank you very much a shout out to Didi as well who's been great with emails and helped arrange this conversation <laughs> as well so it's very uh, true ton, tons of thanks and enjoy the rest of your day thank you so All much right. thank, thank you care. so much bye bye, right. bye. bye.